Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and here's a headline from SueCryptos.com. February 17th will make or break the Ripple vs. SEC case. Ooh, that sounds rather dramatic. Uh, so what's at stake here? What is at stake here? Well, this article is all about these, uh, well, some memos of Ripple's dating back to 2012, which is the year that Ripple, the company, was actually founded. And there are memos in question, including one that the SEC argues makes it incredibly clear that Ripple knew that XRP was a security and that uh, they have no excuse for having moved forward in the sale of it in any capacity, period, full stop. Uh, now, Ripple on the flip side is taking, not surprisingly, the opposite opinion. And so we know that the, the contents of this particular memo is on that topic. Uh, Ripple did receive legal guidance on this topic. It's just that Ripple's claiming it's one thing and the SEC's claiming it's another. They're both reading the same damn documents, the same memos, and they're coming to completely different conclusions. Well, we're going to find out tomorrow because these memos are going to be unsealed, which is what led to this headline, Make or Break for the SEC versus Ripple case tomorrow. Um, well, look, the importance of this, they're hitting the nail on the head as far as it being Make or Break literally tomorrow. Not true, and I will explain what I mean by that. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, in we go. Did Ripple and its two executives, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, know that XRP was a security as they sold billions of dollars worth of the token? This will be the question to which we might finally learn the conclusive answer in a week's time. Now, by the way, it's worth n pausing here just to note that Brad Garlinghouse was not a part of Ripple from the beginning of the company. I can't remember exactly when he jumped on board, but I believe it was 2015, maybe 2016. And his first position was not CEO. He's currently the CEO. That was not his first position with Ripple. He wasn't gifted a bunch of XRP at the outset of the creation of the company. Uh, or, at the, or, or at the inception of XRP. That is not the case. Um, so as, as far as if he, he ended up being gifted XRP, I'm not aware of any public information that would indicate whether or not that would, was, some, was part of his compensation package. But I would still insist, even if XRP ended up being part of his compensation package, that's just an asset. He can do whatever the hell he, he wants with that, right? Just just like, um, you know, if you're coming on board as a CEO for a you know, Fortune 500 company, you, you may, uh, as part of your compensation package, be gifted uh, any number of things, including stock. Now, obviously, a, a stock, which is a registered security with the SEC, very different than XRP. But I'm just, what I'm saying is, what, at the heart of, of what I'm getting at there is just this idea that if you're a, a company operating within the United States, you can do all sorts. You can have all sorts of creative ways to compensate people. And if part of that is issuing an asset, then fine. Who the hell cares? They could give you a, they could give you twenty five Honda Civics. That could be just name your stupid thing that that floats to your head. It could be whatever. The SEC has no business saying that 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 uh, makes it a security or not a security or any of the nonsense things that they've claimed uh, go along with Brad Garlinghouse having sold some XRP along the way. It doesn't make logical sense. Anyway, the piece continues though. But now, the uh, the, the focus. Uh, now the focus has turned. Rather than scrutinizing the SEC's uh, failure to give guidance, it's now on whether the third-party legal firms that Ripple consulted all those years ago told the company that XRP was a security. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, last week, Judge Annalisa Torres of the U.S. District Court in Manhattan ruled that Ripple must unseal the documents showing what legal advice it received regarding the legality of XRP tokens. Now, just pause here. Um, this is just a minor point, but I wanted to bring it up. My understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, but my understanding is not that Ripple's unsealing them. It's that these documents are already within the, the, the legal system, within the, the court has them, and it would be the court that is actually unsealing them to the public. So if I'm mistaken, if you, somebody knows for sure, let me know, that's fine. But um, I don't think that is worded quite accurately. Not a huge deal, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, I don't know 100% because I'm not a lawyer. So just ask any lawyer and they'd probably understand the process, right? Anyway, peace continues though. And there's a little subheading. Why February 17th is a make or break day. Back in 2012, when Ripple launched, Chris Larson, who was then the CEO, sought advice from a law firm on the status of XRP. 
This law firm, whose name has remained undisclosed all this while, submitted two memos to Ripple in which it had analyzed all the legal issues that could arise from the new token. All this has been public knowledge. What has been the bone of contention was the content of the, mem the, the memos. According to the SEC, Ripple was advised that XRP is a security, but chose to march on with its token's plans regardless. Uh, Chris and Ripple dispute this allegation. They claim that any reasonable mind would have concluded that XRP isn't a security under federal laws from the memos they received. However, despite asserting that the memo memos exonerate them, Ripple and its execs don't want them to be unsealed. In fact, they have fought hard to keep what's in these memos away from the SEC and the general public. In one filing towards this, the two claim that it was, that uh, what's in the memos is competitively sensitive and additionally doesn't affect the case in a significant manner. So let's pause. Um, I don't know whether or not that's true because I haven't seen the memos. Uh, we should have our hands on them tomorrow, so I'm sure I'll, I'll have some lots to say. I'm sure all of you listening will have lots to say, too. Um, so if that's true, then that's disappointing for Ripple. If it's not, then it, and it'll be obvious after reading through it. I'll note that as well. Either way, it, it doesn't change what's at the, the, the heart of this case which, case, which is whether or not XRP itself it represents an investment contract. Most certainly does not. But anyway, uh, Judge Torres disagrees with Ripple. If the memos prove your innocence and you keep reference them, referencing them in court, then they must be relevant to the case, she argued in a nutshell. Well, look, nobody's disputing that they're, whether or not they're they're valuable. Ripple says that, that they prove their case. SEC proves, says it proves their case. Uh, the judge recognizes this as well. So none of that's a surprise. It's just a question of whether or not this gets out into the public. And so understand that... Um, whether or not the contents of the sealed memos are good or bad for Ripple, the unsealing of them tomorrow on February 17th will have no impact on the case. No impact whatsoever. The memos have already been, been seen by Ripple, the SEC, and Judge Torres. The memos are evidence within the case regardless of whether or not they are sealed. Unsealing these memos makes them visible to the public, and that's the only thing that will change. That's it. Unsealing them just means that you and I get to see them. That's it. It's not going to change the outcome of the case one iota, not one tiny little baby boo shred. Um, so I'm curious, like I'm like personally, I'm looking forward to seeing them. But if it turns out that what Ripple is arguing is the case and that it's detrimental to their business for anything, then that'll be regrettable. But whatever, it's it's coming out tomorrow. So uh, so we'll find out. We'll, we'll know sooner than later. But that's also the reason that I said at the outset that I don't really agree with the approach that this crypto media outlet was taking in terms of it being make or break day. No, 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 no. The information is already known. So whether or not this is something that is going to be of substantial consequence, well, sure. But they're going to argue that in court regardless of what happens regarding the unsealing of these documents tomorrow. That, that's the only point that I was making on that. It's still an important day because we're going to get the information, though. But uh, anyway, peace continues. By February 17th, we will be able to judge for ourselves who has been lying between the SEC and Ripple. The regulator is intent on accessing these memos as they would prove that Ripple knew it was committing a crime but went on about its business regardless. The memos would also decimate Ripple's fair notice defense. Um, could the memos be damaging to Ripple's defense? If they are, then the blockchain payments company is doing a great job of hiding it. Uh, and look, and now here's what I've said with, without having been obviously been privy to any of the specifics. We'll find out tomorrow. But I've, I've long said, even if Ripple's legal team said, hey, there's a risk that the SEC could claim that XRP is a security, that doesn't mean that Ripple's legal team was saying that meant that XRP was the security or that it was likely that the SEC would actually come after them. that. Those are very different arguments. The SEC can claim all sorts of bogus nonsense stuff. It doesn't mean that Ripple would have thought, oh, wow, this does mean, based on this information from the legal team that we hired, that XRP is a security. It, there's, like, I can't fathom that. It would have to blatantly state that for me to be convinced of that. And well, that's what basically that's kind of what the SEC is arguing. It makes it so obvious. So if the SEC is arguing that, okay, fine, we're, we're going to know. Uh, if, if I had to bet, given the track record of, of Ripple and the SEC, the track records of, of each of those uh, entities... I'd be willing to bet that the SEC is continuing to be a bunch of asshat liars. If they're actually not, fine. I will. I will mention that. I'm just. I will. I'm, whatever the truth is, whatever, however it really strikes me, I'm going to be honest and share that, even if it's not positive for Ripple and or XRP. Period. That's just how it is. I want to live in reality. 
But I don't suspect that's going to be the case based on the track records of, of uh, the two entities, Ripple and the SEC. Uh, peace continues, though. Again, could, could the, the memos be damaging to Ripple's defense? If they are, then the blockchain payments uh, company is doing a great job of hiding it. Now, in a statement following the latest ruling by Judge Torres, Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, said that the, the company is eagerly awaiting the unsealing of the memos as they will show that in 2012, Ripple received a legal analysis that XRP was not an investment contract. The SEC knew that XRP was trading globally for eight years before it brought its case against the cryptocurrency, a development that the attorney describes as baffling. And he added, quote, We look forward to the public having access to these documents as we continue vigorously to defend the case. And so, as far as that, like... He's saying we look forward to the, to the public having it, but then also we know that Ripple was, just to be fair, Ripple was also arguing, uh, we don't want this public. So, which is it? <laughs> Are they just trying to be positive now that it's happening for sure? I, I don't know. Peace continues. The SEC isn't backing down either. Following the judge's ruling, it stated that it's critical for the public to see the memo so that, if not for anything else, to prove that the regulator hasn't been lying about its accusations. <laughs> Skeptical there, we'll see. Uh, once the memos are public, the case will take on a very different dynamic. If Ripple hasn't been lying, its lack of fair notice defense will get a big boost and the case could crumble for the SEC. And while both sides continue to show their confidence in a positive outcome, someone is going to lose come February 17th and lose badly. Well, look, the, the facts, like I said, the facts are already known. known so we're just going to be privy to it at that point. But the evidence is the evidence regardless. Okay, so it doesn't matter in that sense. But yes, the specifics, I'm um, looking forward to seeing them. Again, I just, I I doubt that this is going to be bad for Ripple and XRP holders. But uh, I'm looking forward. I'm very, I gotta admit, I'm very curious to see what comes out tomorrow. So let me know what you think, but that's the update for now. There will be a lot more to talk about this over the next day or two in particular, but I'm wrapping up for now. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.